hello, everyone. This is Byron King and Jack Lifton with Investor Intel. Today, we are going to speak with Peter Cashin, who runs a, a, a junior exploration company called Imperial Mining Group, uh, which works in uh, way northern Quebec on uh, a project that involves rare earths, which you understand, but scandium, which very few people understand. Um, we've talked about rare earths many, many times. I don't believe we've really talked about scandium at all. It's a miracle metal. It's one of those, you know, alien kind of things that has astonishing properties. Uh, you add it to aluminum and it strengthens the, uh, strengthens aluminum greatly. Uh, I hold in my hand here a model of a, of a Russian Sukhoi 35 uh, jet fighter bomber. It's their most advanced uh, aircraft. Uh, the wings in it and much of the aerostructure includes scandium reinforced uh, aerospace grade aluminum, and it's quite an impressive uh, aircraft. Um, having said all of that, uh, we will also you know, mention that uh, one of the great and principal sources of scandium in the world happens to be Russia. And as everyone certainly is aware, uh, there are grave problems in the world uh, con you know, concerning Russia, the Ukraine, the war that's going on and the sanctions against Russia. Uh, we're not gonna get into the issues of the war. I mean, you can, you know, you read the newspapers and what have you, we have to be a little more detached from it today. So pardon if we uh, seem a little clinical, uh, but this is, this is why we're here is to get away from the emotion and talk about the investment opportunities. Uh, Peter uh, Cashin, give us a brief rundown on what, what it is that you have and what is the status of your scandium uh, mineral development at a place called Crater Lake. Thanks, Byron. Yeah, it's a, a discovery we made in 2014 when I was running Quest Rare Minerals, and we've subsequently uh, recognized number one that there's a there's a severe lack of of opportunity or a severe, uh, severe lack of sustainable supply. And as you rightly pointed out, I think people understand that uh, certainly the consumers in the areas of aerospace, automotive. Uh, Defense understand its its uh, significant properties and how it could really improve the performance of their platforms. Um, we've now moved the project. Uh, when we got onto the ground, recognized the scanning potential. We've done we did quite a bit of field work, and we recognized that the scanning horizon now has been traced around for 14 kilometers. It's related to what they call a ring dike complex with a calder collapse. So there's a volcanic neck. You had the collapse of the center of the caldera, and it basically caused the, the using of the scandium bearing material up the ring fault system that was created from that event. And uh, we've we've actually traced it around now for 14 kilometers, and we've got about uh, four separate uh, deposit areas uh, of of interest. One of which we've now moved into uh, resource category. And we're working towards a preliminary economic assessment on the project, which should be deliverable, I would say, within the next month or so. So in terms of mining, is it you, you, uh, you we were talking earlier, so we'll, we'll, we'll skip over the, you know, any of the, any of the, the dancing around here. You, you're right. talking about a surface mine that you, you just dig into it. You're not going to have to tunnel down initially, are you? Uh, initially, no. Um, and the, it comes to surface, so it would be an open pitable opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, we've the resource itself we've defined as about 20 million tons in all categories, uh, down from surface to 300 meters or 200 meters. But the, the system is completely wide open, and um, you know obviously uh, the the pit will will go down a certain level uh, when the economics are less favorable, and at that point in time, likely we at the bottom of the pit, then we would start uh, tunneling down uh, to to catch the, the the vertical extension of the zone. We know from our modeling that it, it goes down at least a kilometer. So I think we've got a lot of room to expand the resource potential, the opportunity. Worldwide, yeah. globally, there's about 35 to 40 tons a year of this material produced, almost all of it in China and Russia. Right. Uh, obviously, these are you know countries that are you know uh, not exactly where we want to build our aerospace industry. You know, make it make it reliant on. Uh, Jack, you you we, we were talking earlier. Jack, you have some comments on. On this, why don't you uh, chime in and then uh, and certainly uh, ask Peter? Peter's we, questions. we need to know why should we care about Scandia? One, two, when are you going to produce it, and how much you're going to produce, and are you going to be 
competitive? Um, and the answer to your first question, um, as Byron pointed out, uh, by inputting small quantities of scandium into aluminum metal, um, as low as 0 0.2 to 0.4%, you can increase the mechanical properties of that aluminum alloy by as much as 800%, so eight times. So uh, we are driving towards uh, reducing the carbon footprint of the transportation industry, as well as application in aerospace, application defense, as well as in fuel cells, alternative energy. So all those things, uh, the, and you, how do you get there? You, you get there by lightening up the, the platform itself. And scandium is a, is a very, uh, well, it's an equal replacement to uh, existing materials that are used in certainly the aerospace industry, titanium, and steel and the rest. So, um, so that's one thing. And then and lightening up the platform, you're making it more fuel efficient. You're going to burn less fuel. You actually have significant fuel savings in those applications. My, my understanding also is that it, it, you get extreme corrosion resistance. I've seen uh, photos uh, of uh, scandium aluminum plates submerged in seawater for a great deal of time with no no obvious corrosion. So I would assume that in in our our Navy or naval applications, that would be a very, very big plus. Yeah, uh, it's, it's also therm, uh, th uh, resist thermal recrystallization. So in a high temperature environment, um, if you uh, certain alloys recrystallize when you, in other words, they get coarser grain. And in doing so, you actually weaken the mechanical properties of that alloy. So uh, because scanning aluminum resists that, that recrystallization, it, it's able to maintain its, its, uh, its physical properties. And it can be brought into applications that high temperature applications. One of them that comes to mind is uh, the housings to electric motors and EVs. Um, lots, of, lots of heat is generated in those things. And some of the automotive manufacturers we've been speaking to uh, are looking for scanning aluminum for that application. So Peter, uh, Peter, we were talking earlier about you know how, how the market is very small right now, but it could grow possibly with more aerospace, automotive, uh, energy applications such as uh, say fuel cells. But for, for, for investors out there who are watching this uh, show, uh, could you uh, describe Imperial Mining? What's the nature of the company? What's your share, share structure? Uh, how are you doing in terms of uh, money in the bank and, and you know, where do, where do you go in terms of your, your program over the next year and two? Well, we're, we're listed both on the, t the Venture the TSX Venture Exchange as well as the OTCQB. Mm -hmm. So we have a U.S. presence. Um, we just did a financing in, in uh, December this past year uh, for $3 million. So our, we've got about $2.8 million in, into the till right now, which is uh, from our projections of uh, activity expenditure. It's more than, more than covers it. Um, we, we've had to uh, uh, finance at, at, at low uh, share prices um, to just for the sake of getting the capital to move the project forward. Uh, but with the, our, our view is that with the announcement of the PEA coming up, uh, we, the market will be able to put a value on the proposition of development of our scanning opportunity. Is this the kind of thing, uh, is this kind of program where you would be looking for a, a, a larger partner or an offtake agreement with a, a downstream user to either bring in uh, funding or bring in some sort of expertise or other assets to the to the play. That's correct. I mean, we were having those discussions with the automotive, the defense sector, um, some some players in the aluminum production space. Um, the the idea being their offtake. Obviously, uh, we announced a. a, a, a activities and development, uh, alloy development with the EC Industries in Wisconsin. Um, the application is to look, they, the, their client, which is a major global automotive manufacturer, was looking for material for the use in their battery box. So the battery box not only contains the electric, the battery cells for an EV, but it also has to be strength, it provides strength, uh, because that's ultimately the chassis of your automobile. Mm -hmm. And and uh, the so that could if it uh, we're in the prototype stage for the battery box, if approved, that could convert into a very significant offtake agreement with that automotive manufacturer. 
So it ties uh, we're, having having other, we're having other other dis, uh, we're having discussions in the defense industry because they've been told by the U.S. government that they have to lighten up their platforms. So scanning aluminum is a viable replacement to steel armor plate on things like tanks and personnel carriers. Uh, Jack, you mentioned uh, in marine applications, uh, the the issue is that uh, with the LCS uh, uh, program, um, they've had difficulties with cracking of wells and, and they've had to put those, and those are the ships, but they don't have a, 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 a 90 degree angle. They're all, they're actually uh, radar transparent. Uh, they've had issues with cracking of welds and they had to dry dock them on an annualized basis to check the wells and replace them. The moment you put that scandium aluminum, a scandium into aluminum for weld purposes, you eliminate the cracking issues. So I, th I think it would be the U.S. government's considering canceling that program. I think this this scandium aluminum would actually be a savior to that program. The 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 issue here is, this is really scandium is a critical material of burning because it is it is very scarce, and and it's it's going to go if you in fact begin production. You mentioned in a previous discussion that you would reach an 80 ton a year plus production level sometime uh, towards the end of this decade. That would make you the largest Scandium producer in the world by far, and would make uh, Canada and Quebec the world center of Scandium. Now, I, I, I believe that, that that's going to happen. I really, I really do. And <coughs> I believe that we're going to add Scandium to the list of critical materials. Because as you say, there are some there are some applications for which there's no other solution, and there won't be any other solution. So, uh, got to wish you luck, Peter. You've got you've got a quite a complex road to hoe. This is not your your father's junior mining company. You are you are a serious uh, shot at vertical integration into an end use product, uh, and and we wish you the best of luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And for investors out there who are watching this, uh, I refer you please to the Imperial uh, Mining website where they have an excellent uh, presentation that uh, highlights a lot of the things that we've discussed in greater detail, including comparisons with other uh, potential Scandium plays out there. And when you look at the numbers, you will see that Imperial is a very, very strong play. You know, great, uh, as, mines, as mines and minerals go, it's, you know, great numbers, great ore, great grade, um, and then uh, I just I would just say that in my own opinion, I think they have a phenomenal uh, geological feature there. It's very, very rare in this world and uh, Imperial controls it. Uh, uh, Jack, thank you. Uh, Peter, thank you. Uh, and we'll, we'll call it quits for now. Uh, good investing to everyone and best wishes to everyone uh, across the world. This, uh, this war situation is terrible. Um, we're being clinical here, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it creates other opportunities, um, which, you know, you can take advantage of. Thanks, Byron. Thanks, uh, Jack. Have a good day.